Well, welcome back. Now, in this segment, I'll tell you the important role hormones play in health. And hormone balance is a critical area in having a healthy body. I know I see patients every day who have hormonal imbalance. And I'll go as far as to say you can't live a happy, healthy life if your hormones are out of balance. It's just not possible. We're exposed in infancy to these what we call endocrine disruptors. These are chemicals in the environment and our foods and our water that imbalance our hormone systems. Okay? Now one big category is xenoestrogens. That's just a fancy word which means foreign estrogens. So all these chemicals, they have these estrogen-like compounds. They get in our body and they cause hormonal imbalance because they act like estrogen in your body. And they're found in plastics, food preservatives, insecticides, pesticides, and personal products. And they absorb it through the skin and get into your body. For example, exposure to the xenoestrogen, BPA, maybe you've heard of it, bisphenol A, is linked to reduced semen quality and sperm count, according to the results of a study in the Journal of Fertility and Sterility. And how about antibiotics? You know, antibiotics, they can have benefit, they can destroy bad bacteria, but they also destroy the good bacteria in your body, which your body also uses to metabolize estrogen. Okay, and you have trillions of these good bacteria in your digestive tract. Wipe them out, your body can't maintain a good estrogen balance. Also, you know, drugs get flushed down the toilet, birth control pills, other hormones. They get back into the water supply, back into the human body. I mean, it's a problem. So how do you protect yourself? The first thing I have patients do, as best as you can, eat organic foods. If you can't do that, eat fresh, local, non-pesticide foods as much as possible, including hormone-free meats and organic milk, if you drink milk. Otherwise, I like patients to drink the plant milks because they're very pure, such as almond milk, hemp seed milk, oat milk. You know, they're much more readily available now. And please, do not drink tap water. You need to drink purified water, whether it be reverse osmosis, distilled. Tap water has what? Well, it has chlorine in it. It can have fluoride in it. The human body was not designed for those chemicals, okay? They can be toxic to the body. Certainly, lifestyle issues can imbalance our hormones. For example, if you're under chronic stress and your stress hormone cortisol is at high levels for long periods of time, you know what research shows? It imbalances all the rest of the hormones in the body. So you've got to control your stress levels using stress reduction techniques. You know, some people like prayer, other people like exercise, listening to music, hanging out with friends. You've got to control that stress. Also, consume more fiber from plant foods. Why? Well, in your body, our hormones circulate around. Let's just take estrogen, for example. It circulates around both men and women. And it gets broken down into different metabolites. And then those metabolites, they get flushed out of the body, get broken down by your liver, go through your bile, go through your digestive tract, out through your stool. And some go out through your urine as well. Now, if you don't have enough fiber, those hormones actually get recirculated. They don't get eliminated, go back into the body. Of course, that can contribute to all sorts of problems, right? breast problems and ovary problems and uterine problems and in men prostate problems because the prostate is very sensitive to estrogen so we've got to get more fiber in the diet you've got to get more fruits and vegetables nuts and seeds get more plant foods doesn't mean you have to be vegetarian I mean I'm not but you've got to get more plant foods in if you want to have good hormone balance and good health now here are some other conditions that result from hormone imbalance the first is depression now, you always think of depression as imbalance in the brain chemicals, your neurotransmitters. But, you know, for a lot of people, that really isn't the root cause. The root cause is their hormones are imbalanced. Let me give you some examples. Well, we know for certain that if you have low thyroid function, and millions of Americans do and don't know it, you cannot produce the brain chemicals as effectively. You're going to be more apt to have depression. Or let's say you're a woman and you have low progesterone levels. And that can happen anywhere from age... 15 all the way up to 60. And low progesterone means, again, you can't produce your brain chemicals effectively. How about men with low testosterone? What's one of the classic symptoms of low testosterone? Well, depression, fatigue, and so forth. So you see the hormones actually stimulate the production of your brain chemicals. Low hormones, imbalance in your brain chemicals. You go in the doctor's office and you're feeling depressed or anxious, whatever, and you get what? Well, you get a drug to artificially increase your brain chemicals when maybe your hormones needed to be tested, balanced out, 
and then your brain chemicals normalize out. Does that make more sense? And that's what I do with a lot of patients. See, I see a lot of menopausal women. And they come in, they're anxious, and they're depressed. And nothing's going on in their life to really explain it. Nothing really out of the ordinary. I check their hormones, find out where the imbalance is, correct them. What happens? Their mood normalizes out. And they don't get on these drugs with all these side effects. Think of this, a review of studies, you know, studies plural, published in psychotherapy and psychosomatics, found that only 2.7% of 4,000 patients report benefit from taking antidepressants for 12 months. 2.7%. A lot of them just don't work as well as you think. And look at the side effects of antidepressants. Loss of libido, fatigue, weight gain, even, in a small percent of cases, suicidal thoughts can be a side effect. For depression, lifestyle changes are very important. Let me give you an example. They've done studies with walking. It's been shown that walking three times a week for 30 minutes is comparable to taking antidepressant medications. I mean, how simple is that, right? You don't have to worry about side effects, except maybe a dog chasing you down the street, but, you know. Let me tell you about a patient of mine, a 53-year-old, who had been fighting depression for five years. And she was on antidepressant medication. And when I was talking to her, I found out her depression started during menopause. It wasn't some big life event, the death of a loved one or something like that. So what does that tell you? Yes, I tested her hormones, and they were a mess. So I balanced out her thyroid, her estrogen and progesterone, and she <coughs> felt much better. Then I was able to wean her off her medication over about two months' period of time, and she was a new person. Now, I know a lot of people with depression, they just have very low motivation. It can be part of the disease, so to speak. And we need to get them feeling better quickly, get their confidence up, get them out and socializing. So often I'll use supplements. Okay, a very common one is St. John's wort. Now, let me tell you this. Forget about what the mainstream media has told you, that St. John's wort doesn't work. That's nonsense. Let me prove it to you. A study in the British Medical Journal reviewed 23 randomized clinical studies involving St. John's wort and found it equally effective for mild to moderate depression. You see, when you heard that St. John's wort is not effective for depression, they forgot to tell you one thing. That study found it wasn't effective for severe depression, and neither were the drugs in that study. And the omega-3 fatty acids, they're so critical because they're actually what compose your brain cells. Okay, so to produce neurotransmitters, you need those good omega-3 fatty acids. That's why fish oil has been shown in several studies to help fight depression and anxiety. And B vitamins are critical for brain function too and memory, especially folic acid and B12. You know, if you have deficiencies of these nutrients, which is not uncommon in America, that can lead to depression. Matter of fact, 20% of seniors have B12 deficiency because they lose the ability to absorb it. One in five seniors. Also, folic acid, you need it to make the neurotransmitters in your brain. And up to 20% of the population as well have a genetic defect where their body cannot convert it to its active form. So they need supplementation. So just by getting these B vitamins in through your foods, through supplements, can make a big difference in your mood. Another one I use with patients quite a bit, it's called 5-HTP. And that stands for 5-hydroxytryptophan. You see, the way it works in the body is that you've probably heard about the amino acid tryptophan. Yeah. Your body takes the tryptophan from foods you eat. It gets converted into this 5-hydroxytryptophan, and then your brain uses it to make serotonin. You see, unlike drugs, it doesn't force your brain to make it, and then you all sorts of side effects. It just provides the nutrition, the building blocks, for your brain to make the serotonin like it wants to. You know, that feel-good neurotransmitter. Isn't that a better way to do it? And people will report, even in a couple hours, they have a lifting of their mood. And certainly we have people take it throughout the day, two to three times a day, and just maintain a good mood. Even people genetically predisposed to depression to keep their serotonin levels up. And we don't see side effects with it. Well, there is one. People crave sweets and carbs less when they take 5-HTP. Now, as far as diet and your mood, remember this. Sweets, while they temporarily make you feel good, they can cause blood sugar swings, right? Also, for some people, artificial sweeteners, they get a reaction by their brain and nervous system. And be aware, that could cause mood problems, too. It's best to avoid them, in my opinion. Don't overconsume alcohol, because it acts as a, de a depressant, too. 
And remember again the magnesium. We need magnesium to make the brain chemicals, especially serotonin. So good sources of magnesium in foods are legumes, nuts, whole grains, and green vegetables. You see, making these few changes will begin to turn your depression around. As well, fatigue. You know, in modern medicine, what happens when you go to the doctor and you tell them you have fatigue? Well, they do things they should do. They make sure you're not anemic, you don't have cancer, serious things like that. But do they check your hormones? They may check your thyroid, but do they check your testosterone and your stress hormones and these types of things? Not usually. And again, when you have imbalance in your hormones, that certainly will contribute to fatigue. Now, what I see with a lot of patients is their stress hormones from long stress have been burnt out. And also these stress hormones like cortisol and DHA, they help your cells to produce energy. So if we don't get those up to normal levels, you just can't create the energy in your cells like you need to. Also remember, when you have hormone imbalance, you're less able to handle stress. You know, you get irritable, you get anxious. Just by balancing out your hormones, often you'll handle stress much better. Now another major problem in America in regards to hormones is thyroid, thyroid imbalance. Matter of fact, millions of Americans have a thyroid problem, but the majority don't even know it's an issue. So your thyroid gland is located below your Adam's apple, right here in your neck, and it produces thyroid hormones that are involved in the metabolic activity in your cells. So they help produce energy in your cells. You have to have it. Also, they, they play a factor in your weight control, your heart rate, even your body temperature. And undiagnosed thyroid problems, well, they increase your risk of obesity, heart disease, depression, anxiety, hair loss, even problems with sexual function. You can get brittle nails. Um, even your cholesterol will go up if you have low thyroid. Let me tell you about a patient who was diagnosed with low thyroid and put on synthetic hormone replacement for two years. When I saw her, she was having severe insomnia, nauseousness, dizziness, depression. You know, her face was puffy. She was gaining weight. Of course, that's what bothered her the most. That wasn't enough. Of course, she had low stamina and energy. Even her eyebrows were starting to thin out on the outer one-third, which is a classic symptom of low thyroid. So you can imagine, she's being treated with medicine, so she's very, very frustrated. So I started from scratch. I tested her hormone balance, but much more comprehensively, and I found it was out of balance. So I put her on a natural, a bioidentical thyroid hormone prescription. And within two weeks, her symptoms began to disappear. And ultimately, she lost 34 pounds. And she felt joy and hope again. Now, I couldn't talk about hormone imbalance without talking about menopause, right? That's a lot of women in America today, the baby boom generation. You know, with menopause, what's happening is the ovaries are no longer ovulating. You're not having a menstrual cycle. And the hormone levels, as they should, start to drop. Your estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, other hormones can drop as well. But you see, for some women, this drop can, this drop can be too rapid or too extreme and cause just a whole host of different symptoms. You know what they are, hot flashes, night sweats, insomnia, mood changes, skin changes, arthritis, and the list goes on and on, all related to hormone imbalance. So let me tell you about one patient illustrating the power of just some simple natural remedies. She states, when I first came to Dr. Stengler, I was experiencing low energy, night sweats, hot flashes during the day, and brain fogginess. After he supplied me with two homeopathic formulas, I immediately stopped having the night sweats and hot flashes. I was able to sleep through the night, and now I'm much more energetic and focused. So again, you can get those kind of results with these natural remedies too. For example, herbal extracts, black cohosh, has many studies on it, showing it helps menopausal symptoms. Also, maca root. A study done here in America showed it very effective in alleviating all sorts of menopausal symptoms, hot flashes, night sweats, sweet problems, heart palpitations, the list goes on and on. Nice thing with maca and these herbal extracts, they balance the hormones already in your body. They don't give you hormones, they balance what's in your body, which is the best way to do it if you can. Also, rhubarb extract, you know, of all things, rhubarb. That was shown in a recent study to be comparable to synthetic hormone replacement in alleviating hot flashes and menopausal symptoms. So again, these things are studied, you just have to know about them. They are available. And diet's important for menopause too. You know, I talk to a lot of women and they will tell you when they have caffeine, 
when they have alcohol, too much sugar, it flares up their hot flashes. So you have to be aware of that. Also, you want to increase your plant foods. Why? Well, plant foods contain phytosterols, even simple plant foods like carrots, lettuce, brown rice, almonds, pomegranates. They have phytosterols, these chemicals in plants which naturally balance out the body's hormones. Okay? Of course, they're completely safe. Also, you can consume fermented soy foods like tempeh, natto, miso. Also, ground flax seeds. You've heard about them. They're in health food stores. Ground flax seeds have been shown in studies to reduce hot flashes. Of course, it's also good for your cholesterol, it's good for your digestion, and they have those omega-3 fatty acids, something very simple you can take daily. Also, exercise reduces menopausal symptoms. Okay, studies have shown just walking, again, three to five times a week can dramatically reduce hot flashes, natural and safe. Now, for some women who have just severe symptoms, I will use natural hormones, also known as bioidentical hormones. You see, the bioidentical hormones are identical in both their structure and in function to what goes on in the human body. Well, the same can't be said of synthetic hormones. Why are they synthetic? Well, they're synthetic because the drug companies can't patent a natural substance. And then you can't charge 10 to 20 times the price, right? So not much interest in the natural. But they're available. Holistic doctors around the country can prescribe them from pharmacies, their prescription. If you've got good insurance, it'll cover it. Otherwise, they're not that expensive. So you can get natural or bioidentical estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, DHA, thyroid, and so forth. Now, another symptom of hormone imbalance is low sex drive. A lot of patients tell me they have low sex drive. And they go into their regular doctor, and what happens often? Well, they're told it's probably due to stress or you're depressed. Either way, quite often you're recommended an antidepressant or anti-anxiety medication, right? And guess what one of the potential side effects of men, many antidepressants are? Low sex drive. <laughs> so now you've got a double whammy there. But there's good news. There's easy, natural approaches that can help. For example, the maca root I mentioned before, which you get from Peru, available in American health food stores, it's been used for centuries by those people to help with libido for both men and women. Completely safe. Works very effective. Modern studies have shown it actually does have that effect. Or the medicinal mushroom called cordyceps. That's been used in Japanese and Chinese medicine for this purpose as well. Again, we don't find side effects with it. Actually, it helps people with their energy as well. Studies show it increases libido. So it works with your body's own system. And then for patients where they need something stronger, these supplements just aren't effective. And for many people, they will be. I test the hormones DHEA and testosterone because they're directly linked to desire. And so if they're low, I'll prescribe them in their natural form, their bioidentical form. You can get bioidentical DHA, bio, bioidentical testosterone, and usually people within a month will notice a good improvement. Make it a top priority to get your hormone levels tested and get them balanced out naturally. Coming up, I'll show you how to lose weight quickly and easily how to address your memory loss, and how to get the boundless energy you've been dreaming of. Thank you.